Hello, my name is Drew Raison. I'm the executive director of EMIAP, the Electronic Music Education and Preservation Project, located north of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in the United States. On today's episode of Inside the Mix, we look into the mind and talents of Pink Floyd founding member and keyboardist Richard Wright. The focus for today is on the early part of Wright's career with Pink Floyd. This includes the albums The Piper at the Gates of Dawn, A Saucer Full of Secrets, Umma Gumma, Metal, and Obscured by Clouds. This era of Pink Floyd culminates in the production of their live performance film, Live at Pompeii, released back in 1972. Rick's style and tone changed over the course of his storied career as technical advances brought him a new palette of sounds. He was also known for unique approaches to sound modification, such as running his acoustic grand piano through rotating speaker cabinets and utilizing new technologies like tape and drum echo units like the Benson Echo Rec. Today's feature artist is Mike Kiker, who will be showing us all the instruments that we've selected for this episode. Mike also played all the backing instruments, including drums, bass, and guitar. So let's jump on in, meet Mike Kiker, and look into the mind of Richard Wright. I'm here today at MEAP to pay tribute to my favorite keyboard player, Rick Wright of Pink Floyd. Uh, if I had to say that any other band had a bigger impact on my personal life and my musical life, it probably would be Pink Floyd. And growing up, I was a huge listener to the early, especially the earlier stuff, Piper of the Gates of Dawn, Metal, Obscured by Clouds, Adam Hart Mother. Live at Pompeii had such a huge impact on, on me watching that as a kid on VHS. And I was just, I was obsessed with the instruments I saw in that, the Steinway, the Hammond, the Farfisa, later on the, the EMS and the Rhodes. So it's, it's a great honor to be here to, to be able to do this today. All right, so the first thing we're gonna take a look at is this Steinway Grand Piano. So this wasn't actually Rick's piano, but this was actually owned by Keith Emerson. And around the time of Adam Hart Mother, Metal and Live at Pompeii, he did actually have a Steinway on the road with him. And I mean, if you can imagine them hauling a Steinway out into the amphitheater in Pompeii where they filmed it, that was definitely a feat of uh, roadie engineering. So, and what they did, and what we tried to do here, is copy the setup of taking a couple of these microphones and running them through a small mixer, which is powering a rotating Leslie speaker in the back, right behind me, and it sounds something like this. I believe when they first recorded Echoes, when they were putting the, the piece together, it was Rick that had the idea to run the piano through the Leslie because he had heard that high note. Like to him, it sounded like sonar or something that was happening underwater. And that was kind of the general theme of the song as per the lyrics. So, and it's funny because uh, Pink Floyd wasn't actually the first band to use this concept. The first thing that you actually hear of a piano running through a Leslie, if you go back to the Beatles White Album, there's a song called Don't Pass Me By, which Ringo Starr wrote, and actually he plays the piano on it and it sounds like this. So since the Beatles and Pink Floyd both recorded in Abbey Road, I'm sure that idea probably was around, was floating around to run non-organ things through Leslie's. Now, let's take a look at this beautiful Hammond organ right here. So this is an M102 model. This is what they call uh, their spinet series compared to the full-size consoles, which are the B3, the C3, which Rick Wright did use later on. But at the time they did Live at Pompeii, this is what he had on the road with him. And I think his use of Hammond organs goes as far back as Piper of the Gates of Dawn, if I'm not mistaken. So, but it wasn't until, I believe, Adam Hart Mother, 1970, when he started taking the Hammond out with the Farfisa. So what's different about the two organs is that uh, the Farfisa is completely electronic. The Hammond is a electromechanical instrument, meaning there's moving parts inside. There's tone wheels, as they call them. And, and there's 91 individual tone wheels, which each generates a separate sine wave. 
And you can dial each of those separate frequencies in with these drawbars right here. And what I love about the M102 personally compared to, say, the B3 is that this actually got a lot of cool features, which the B3 doesn't have. So first of all, we have the bass pedals, which only has 13 keys from C to C, but it has bass pedal sustain. I Meaning you get this long sustained bass, unlike the B3, which has just the same tone as the normal keyboards. We also have this function called vibrato celeste, which sounds like its own internal Leslie function. And you can change the settings of that. It also has a traditional vibrato chorus that the B3 has. Uh, however, uh, Rick would actually run uh, the sound of this through its own rotating speaker, which we have over there. And there is a special moon switch over here, which they call it, uh, which allows you to switch between the internal speakers and the Leslie. So this is what the Leslie sounds like. So there's also built-in reverb, which you only hear through the direct speakers. Let me show that off real quick. Without the reverb. And probably my favorite function of this, which the B3 can't do, is that this has the percussion setting, which you can actually mix the two different harmonics. So you have the second harmonic. I'm going to take the drawbars out real quick so you can hear the percussion. So that's the second harmonic, and then the third harmonic on its own. So if you combine that sound with the first three drawbars, you get your classic Jimmy Smith kind of uh, jazz organ tone. So I'm pretty sure Rick was actually a fan of the mixed percussion setting. So if you put those two on together, you get this. So you get a mix of those two harmonics that just makes it a fuller, richer sound. So now we're going to draw our attention to this 88 key Fender Rhodes stage model that has been upgraded to suitcase specifications. The main difference between stage and suitcase model is that uh, the stage model is passive. There's no power going through it. Uh, this model, on the other hand, is powered and has two satellite speakers running in stereo, so you get a stereo tremolo effect. So Rick did not use the Rhodes on Echoes in particular. He did use it on the Obscure by Clouds record on a couple of songs. Uh, Probably the most famous use of it is later on in the Animals record on the song Sheep. More on that in the next video. So now we're going to move on to these EMS synthesizers right here. So to my right is the original VCS3 Putney, and over here is the AKS Portobello model. And both of these are virtually the same instrument. The main difference is obviously the wood casing versus the uh, plastic Samsonite suitcase style, which also houses the digital keyboard sequencer, hence KS. Um, so Pink Floyd had both of these at different times in their careers. Uh, around the time of metal, they got one of these. This one, unfortunately, we're not going to be working with today because it's not working properly. Uh, this one, however, is fully functional, and we'll be using this to mainly do the ending sound effect of echoes, which was actually done with voices and an echo rec. So in this case, I'm kind of recreating that effect using the reverb tank, ring modulator, noise generator, etc. So, but this was the main sound of On the Run, that famous sequence you all know, and pretty much any synthesizer sound on Metal, Obscure by Clouds, Dark Side of the Moon, a good amount of Wish You Were Here as well, besides Mini Moog, etc. And yeah, it sounds something like this. Pardon the crackle.
So over here, I think we have what I would consider Rick's signature sound of that early period, which is this Forfisa Compact Duo. And what we have with it is the preamp slash reverb unit, the FAR unit, and the Benson Echo Rec 2. So this isn't your typical echo unit, not like your space echoes or your echoplex. This has like a rotating wheel. And it just sounds really, just sounds really swelly and muddy, whatever you want to call it. it. Just has its own sound. It really is the sound of early Floyd. Gets a little out of control a little too easily. So there's so many great features on this particular organ. I think the first Farfisa that Rick had was, uh, he got the combo compact model, the single manual model in about 1964. And then he got his first compact duo from Floyd's uh, landlord. I think it was Mike Leonard who, who gave it to him first. And this is all over Piper at the Gates of Dawn, Salsa Full of Secrets, pretty much everything up until, there's even bits of it, I believe, on Dark Side of the Moon, Wish You Were Here, and Animals. So, but there's one bit of echoes which we didn't do in the main track, which I'll demo a bit of right here using all the different features. So, as I said, it has built-in reverb, it has uh, really great vibrato and tremolo settings, and repeat percussion akin to the Babbo O'Reilly sound, and this great multi-tone booster, which is almost like a built-in wah effect. <laughs> Trouble though. Thank you. 